Welcome to the fourth area for our CCNA. This is connecting networks. Here we're dealing with chapter four, frame relaying. I cannot stress the importance of this chapter because when you get ready to take your CCNA, this is one area where you're expected to know how to do this and kind of the underlying theory behind it. Uh, while frame relay may not be heavily used anymore, the concept of frame relay actually went on to build other technologies. So frame relaying, again, is one of those conceptual things that you really need to know and understand and configure. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So we're talking about what frame relay is, how to configure it, how to troubleshoot it. So the objective is understanding the fundamental concepts of frame relay, understand operation and implementation requirements, maps, local management interface operations, things like the permanent virtual circuits or PVCs, uh, configure, troubleshoot, uh, advanced concepts with frame relay, including things like sub-interfaces, bandwidth flow control, multi-point, point-to-point, uh, configure the advanced frame relay PVC settings, including solving the reachable issues, configuring sub-interfaces and verification and troubleshooting of our frame relay configuration. That's a lot, but I mean, once you start getting into it, it really isn't. If you've taken the other three courses and you've retained the majority of the knowledge, understanding mapping and sub-interfaces and flow control, the concepts really haven't changed. We may manipulate them a little bit to fit within frame relay, but the concepts really don't change that much. So let's go ahead and jump right into what frame relay is. So we're going to start off with a generic scenario. You have multiple locations and you want them to be able to connect to one another. Frame relay allows communication between all locations using a single access circuit to the provider. Very similar if you remember talking about Metro Ethernet uh, or MPLS type clouds, here's pretty much the same thing. You have a provider's edge. And you have a customer's edge. That's supposed to be a P. Our customer edge connects to the provider's edge network and internal to this cloud, we don't really care how it works, we just care that it works. And so the connection to that cloud allows you to do virtual circuits to all locations. This is gonna get kind of messy, but And these can be dedicated lease lines. These could be uh, point to point, multi uh, point multi point, or we can not care and go, this is the provider's responsibility and move past it. The interesting thing with the frame relay is you can have it can be asymmetrical, meaning the speeds can be different based off of whatever your requirements are. What do you want to pay? You can do dedicated. Uh, line if you choose to do so but if you want to connect to Mexico City from Toronto you have to connect to HQ then to Mexico City so there are some issues with these dedicated line requirements because if you want to be able to connect between locations you may have to go to a centralized node first before you do that so let's talk about the cost effectiveness and the flexibility of frame relay. So with a dedicated line, customers end up paying for both end-to-end -end connections, uh, including things like the local loop and the network link itself. With frame relay, customers only pay for the local loop, not the bandwidth. So the nice thing is, basically when you're looking at this, it's a way to cut down on equipment and cut down on complexity of the routing and switching. Also, the ability to uh, increase bandwidth as required. Uh, here, if we are doing dedicated lease lines, we'd require a CSU-DSU for each line, 
And again, that makes things more complicated. For virtual circuits, there are two main types, a switched virtual circuit and a permanent virtual circuit. The SVC establishes a dynamic by sending signal messages to the network, where the PVC is a pre-configured by the carrier, and after they are set up, only operate at the data transfer and idle modes. We're gonna get that, we're gonna get more into that when we talk about the configuration portion, but the important thing to take from this is what PVCs are and how we actually identify our virtual connections. Virtual connections are identified by a DLCI number and they have a local significance only, which means that the values are not unique in the frame relay WAN. It's more about just the local instance and they kind of help deal with the point to point connections. Again, the DLC has no significance beyond a single link. So let's go ahead and look at a multi-circuit connection. So you're gonna see here we have orange, which is the DLCI 102. Here we have our cloud. And you'll see the orange pathway. And you'll also see our green pathway. Those are gonna be multiple virtual circuits that connect to this one router. Because again, multiple virtual connections on the same access link are distinguishable by the DLCI number. Here we have the frame relay frame. And you'll notice we have a flag. We have a 16-bit address portion, the data variable, the frame checker for a sequence, and then ending flags. If we look at our 16 bits or our two bytes, we have our DLC source destination and the appropriate subcategories. So let's go ahead and look at frame relay topology. Here we have a frame relay star topology as we see it throughout the carrier. But in reality, the topology doesn't really matter uh, once it's connecting to that star environment or to that ISP's environment because the actual connection in that cloud is not out in our control. All right, moving on, we have our relay address mapping. Again, that's where you start building your IPs and you're gonna be sending it to a DLC number. Here we have a DLC I number of 102, and you're going to see it's going to be broadcasting. If you do the show free relay, uh, show frame relay map, you can actually start getting a map that it's receiving. If you're wanting to see the LMI, show frame show frame relay LMI, and that will show you the management interface and all of the uh, portions of that. LMI has several extensions. The Different types of extensions are going to be the status messages, multicast global addressing, and simple mail flow. And again, here are the appropriate identifiers and the VC types that will define those status messages. So how do you use the LMI and how do we inverse ARP to map addresses? So the inverse ARP request includes the source hardware, the source layer three protocol address, the IP, and the known target hardware address, MAC. The inverse ARP request fills the target layer three protocol address fill with all zeros, it encapsulates the packet for the specific network, and then sends it directly to the destination device using the virtual connection using that DLCI number. Upon receiving an inverse ARP request, the destination device using the source address will create its own DLCI to layer three map. Again, DLC to IP map. It will then send the inverse ARP response that includes its layer three address information. When the source device receives the inverse ARP response, it completes the DLCI to IP map using the provided information. That way it can slowly build its 
IP to DLC map. So the advanced concepts, we're looking at things like the access rate, and that's going to be the capacity of the local loop, as well as the committed information rate, and that's going to be the capacity through the local loop guaranteed by the provider. Because one's going to be your theoretical, one's going to be your actual. So here's a free relay example with speeds. Again, here's our cloud. Here's going to be our logical links through the cloud with the appropriate DLCI numbers. And again, down here is going to be more of the bandwidth. We have what's called the bursting effect, which actually a lot of people are very common with this. They don't always see it though. Uh, burst is where you actually go above your bandwidth or your actual, what you're allotted. And then it kind of trickles back down. So it kind of averages out. Uh, home internet typically will burst over what you're supposed to get and then it'll trickle back down to what you should be getting. Moving on is flow control. And the flow control is when the DCE sets the beacon to one bit. It notifies the devices in the direction of the source or the upstream that there is congestion on the network. That way you can kind of control that flow rate. Uh, or if we're talking downstream, it's going to be the FECN bit to one. But again, it will then notify that there's congestion on the network. Big part of flow control is making sure that the reliability and the flow is still working. If it's not, then we can kind of put holdback timers in place so that we're not overloading a link. Let's go ahead and let's talk about configuration. All right, so basic configuration steps is you have to enable the frame relay and then you need to configure either a dynamic or static address mapping. Some of the optional tasks you can do is setting up the LMI, setting up the SDCs, traffic shaping, and customize how a uh, frame relay works in your network and monitoring, but those are all optional. So let's talk about how we configure a static frame relay map. We do that by the frame relay map protocol, protocol address, the DLC number, and broadcast. Protocol will define if it's uh, an IP, IPv6, the other types of uh, protocols, but realistically it's IP almost always. The protocol address will be the network layer address, typically again the IP. The DLCI will define the local DLCI the local DLCI used to connect to the remote protocol address. And then the last part will be broadcast, that's optional. And this allows you to broadcast and multicast over these virtual circuits. So let's go and let's look at very uh, verifying a static frame relay map. Again, we're looking at the show frame uh, relay map and you can actually see the mapping here we're doing IPv6 to a DLC and an IPv4 address to a DLC. Both notice that they are underneath the serial one interface. Here's for R1, here's for R2, but again, both the global unicast address, the link local address, and the IPv4 address. So let's talk about reachability issues. So keep in mind that Frame Relay uses a NBMA type connectivity, which is that hub and spoke topology between remote locations. So basically within the Frame Relay topology, when a single multipoint interface must be used to interconnect multiple sites, routing updates reachability issues can result. The main three issues is split horizon, kind of understanding how the packets must flow, the broadcast unicast replication and neighbor discovery and that's going to be dealing with things like the designated router and the backup designated router as it relates to like things like OSBF and whatnot. So how do we solve those issues? We can solve those issues by thing, uh, doing things like disabling split horizon or using full mesh topologies or even sub interfaces. Subinterfaces is probably going to be the most used within all of these solutions. 
So keep in mind with the subinterfaces, it kind of helps on hub and spoke topology. The hub router can be configured with logical address interfaces, and those are subinterfaces. How we program subinterfaces is if you go to the serial interface, you can always do the same thing that we've done with our LAN interfaces or our Ethernet interfaces. And that's going to be serial, the serial uh, numbering plus the dot and then the subinterface number that you want. Again, you can do a multi point or point to point at this uh, time. And then you do your frame relay interface DLCI and the appropriate DLCI number. So that's how you assign the DLCI number. So let's go and look at an example. Here we have the encapsulation. Here we have the appropriate subinterfaces. Here we are, you'll see that it's subinterface 102. It's point to point. You set up the IP address. And then here's where we actually number our DLCI, interface DLCI, and then the appropriate number. And then the same thing for this one, which will be the second interface. Again, notice that it's filling off the same parent interface. And then here is our frame relay interface DLCI numbering. Now let's talk about troubleshooting. So troubleshooting is going to be more of the show commands. Again, uh, show interface serial. Uh, here you're looking at that particular interface. You're looking for the DLCI numbers, uh, the type, the uh, relay type, uh, if it's up, if it's uh, down, what's going on. We're we'll looking at the show frame relay M uh, LMI. Again, you're looking at the sequence numbers, the invalid dumps, the invalid uh, packets. You're looking at show frame uh, show frame relay. What I would do then is question mark out the rest of it. That way you can see what you're looking at. Are you looking at very specific PVCs? Are you looking at a very specific PVC number? Are you looking at it overall? Uh, you can clear uh, ARP. You can actually clear the frame relay. You can show the maps. You can also debug it if necessary. And that's frame relay in a nutshell. We talked about basic concepts. We talked about the PVCs. Uh, we talked about the DLCIs, how to do a basic configuration. And that's it for this chapter. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.